Welcome to our lecture online. Now that we understand hyperbolas to some extent, let's try some examples. Let's graph these two equations. Notice that here we have the x in front, here we have the y in front. We already know that when the x is positive, or the first term is an x squared over 9 that being positive, we know that the parabola or the hyperbola opens sideways. And when the y squared over over b squared is positive, then we know that the hyperbola opens up and down. All right, what we should do is we should first change the format into the general equation format. So we can write this as x squared over 3 squared minus y squared over 4 squared is equal to 1. Notice that our examples always work out just perfectly like that. And then over here we can write this as y squared over 5 squared minus x squared over 3 squared is equal to 1. Why do we do that? Well, it makes it easier to draw the box and to identify the size of the box. So here we realize that we're going to start from the origin, move 3 units to the right and 3 units to the left to find the edge of the box in this direction. And we're going to move 4 units up and 4 units down to find the size of the box in this direction. So plus 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, minus 4 like this. So this is 3 negative 3, 4, and negative 4. And then we draw the box. We use dashed lines. Okay. And then we draw the diagonals. And of course, we extend them past the points, the corners of the box, to make it easier to graph the hyperbola. Like this. And then, since we have the x squared over 9 being the positive term, we know that the, the hyperbola is going to open up sideways. So it starts at this point right there. And then we asymptotically reach those two lines, same in this direction. And we do the same on the left side, like this and like this. And there's our hyperbola, which matches that equation. We do the same over here. We find, in this case, remember that this is b and this is a. So in the a direction, we go plus 3 and minus 3. In the b direction, we go plus 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and minus 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, like this. So we have 3, negative 3, 5, and negative 5. Then we draw the box, like that. Then we draw the diagonal lines. We extend it past the corners. And then we know that the hyperbola is going to go through these two points right here because we have the y squared as being the positive term. So then the hyperbola will look like this, like this. And we asymptotically reach those two lines. And there you go. That's the hyperbola associated with this equation and the hyperbola associated with that equation. And that's how we draw them when we have the center at the origin. Hyperbolas. Do we have any use for hyperbolas, you're yeah. thinking? Besides understanding... How to graph them? Yeah. Yes, we have all kinds of uses for hyperbolas. <laughs> you all know what kind of uses. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's a lot of applications where we use the hyperbolic functions. I don't know. That, yeah, that's a good question. I see them all the time. I use them all the time, but what do I use them for? Why are you asking me? <laughs> I'm drawing a blank. Hmm. I'll have to think about that. What do we use hyperbolas for? They have a real reason for being. There's all kinds of equations where we need hyperbolic functions. For example, some integrals, as a result, have hyperbolic functions as a result of an integral things like that. So when you integrate certain things, you'll end up with hyperbolic functions. Not good enough for you. <laughs> I have to go look. I know that I encounter them all the time when I do different kinds of work in more advanced mathematics and physics. Yeah. They're necessary. <laughs> you don't believe me. 